Hello there. Today I'm going to cover literally everything you've ever wanted to know about the climbing armor set in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Alright, the climbing gear is immediately northwest of Lookout Landing. It's accessible at the beginning of the game. All you have to do is cross this bridge and it's immediately on your right. And you just need to be able to defeat two like likes. you just started the game, um, some stamina potions might be helpful. The best way to get it is back up a little bit and try to land right in this little opening. And do that to get around that wood thing. And that's the only hard part. Now you just want to get on dry land and run. That guy's on the ceiling. But that's the last enemy that you'll face and you just run up on this hill and fly through the waterfall and you have a fresh new climbing gear. Alright, our second piece of climbing armor is an easy flight immediately south from the Zora area tower. And it's also in a cave. And we want to take the right hand side up here. And you technically don't even have to beat that like like. You just cut these vines. And then you need to maneuver your way over here. And by raising that, we drain the water. And it'll expose our next piece of climbing armor. We've got the boots. Our last stop is the bandana and it is east from the Zora Tower and you can actually fly here with no stamina upgrades if you use a sky island above Zora's domain to rest. So that's the way that I'm entering right now, and the cave is behind these three trees right here. And if you don't have any stamina upgrades, you need to bring something to deal with slippery surfaces or some stamina food or a mixture of both. Once you get to the top, you just take a right and your bandana is waiting for you right here.
Yeah, so I upgraded this fully to the max because I'm a completionist, and if you are too, I've got you covered. If you only want two star, I also have you covered. I'm going to have that in the first section exclusively, so here you go. The requirements for this haven't changed a whole lot outside of needing rupees to complete the set. The Swift Violet requirement increased quite a bit, but other than that, they're all pretty much the same, and to get the set bonus, uh, it's it's really easy. All you have to really try on are the key swings. So for the first two phases, you need to basically focus on two areas of the map. Luckily, one of those is right outside Lookout Landing. If you don't already have nine key swings, if you go out there at night, you will find a pack of wild bats more times than not, uh, shoot a bomb arrow at them, and you will get all of the wings you need immediately. As far as the lizards go, they are also very easy. Just run around in the grass in Hyrule Field and do a spin attack with a one-handed sword and then quickly grab them as they spawn, and you'll have 15 very quickly. Most people like to run around in the desert to get electric keyses. I'm actually a fan of the canyon to the east of the desert, primarily because you can ride around on horseback and avoid the movement speed down. And another thing that horseback allows you to do is press Y to immediately go into a slow motion arrow sequence. Uh, arrows are without a doubt the best way to take out electric keyses because once you get contacted you drop your equipment and they just get really annoying. And another pro of this area is the canyon walls that you are surrounded by line themselves with rush rooms and swift violets. So if you haven't already gotten your rush room for phase one, this is a really great place to do it. And if you are prepping for phase four, the swift violets don't hurt either. If you're still under 15 after fully clearing out that canyon, I would go by the bazaar and start running around in the desert. You probably aren't far off and that should finish you off very easily. All right, congratulations if you only wanted a two star set for the set bonus. We are going to move on to the more difficult three and four star upgrades. There are some oddities with the key spawn mechanics that I'm going to try not to go on a wild tangent about and distract from this video. But when I'm referring to a fixed spawn, it's really important with the fire keys. Those need to be defeated first, and that's going to be your bread and butter on accomplishing the 30 fire key swings. I highly recommend you utilize blood moons and stick to the 12 keys I mentioned. Alright, so I highly recommend putting a uh, travel medallion point near the first group of keys in a flat location. And you're basically traveling down the mountain along the minecar path from the summit. And there are three groups. The numbers go lower the lower you go so you start with five up top and then you have four and then there's three and the only really annoying part about these is there's not really any flat ground to utilize there's just a little bit and you have to be really precise in the spot in which you actually kill the keys so you'll end up taking a lot of damage just kind of baiting them so you got to be careful you probably will die a few times but it's better to get a game over than see a double key swing drop fall into oblivion where you can't get it um these are fixed spawns which means they are there all hours of the day and it's extremely important that you defeat these first because I actually have evidence to suggest that they might actually mess with key spawning below in the circular cart area that you're going to end up in after you defeat these three groups. So you'll have 12 chances at wings here and then we move on. Once you get the car you basically want to do two laps around the mountain and 
you have your sensor on and you will see some at night. I generally will see anywhere between five and eight, not usually more than eight. Uh, this is probably going to take you at least one blood moon, probably two. And I would recommend just calling it a day after you do your car laps. Uh, going northwest, you'll find a couple more, but you're really just going to find frustration at that point, which is why we're doing the fire keys first. So I recorded those fixed spawns in daylight to demonstrate that they spawn in daylight, but make sure it's nighttime when you do your circle around the mountain. Just follow that train track in the car and you'll get some more keys there. And then we're going to head to the snowfield and I will at a later date post a video explaining the difference in the keys down here and the ones that you were flying around fighting earlier. What's really great about this snowfield area is the same as the electric keys. You're able to do this on horseback, which helps tremendously in mitigating the terrain. Um, a horse goes full speed. And there are a lot of distractions around here, like a massive three-headed dragon, among other things. But as long as you have your sensor set properly, you should be able to knock out about half, at least, without a blood moon. And then you can wait on a blood moon to do the second half. But the way that I like to do it is just kind of go up and down this field and do a couple laps before I start going in that back part. But this back part up here has at least six bats, I believe. And there's a couple down here in this stretch. And then going back to the, the fire keys, that fixed spawn concept, inside this cave, there are two of them. And they also can spawn in daylight. And the only other fixed spawns I could find for ice keys are in the Gerudo Highland area. Right next to this shrine, there's a skull. And there's two more that you'll find sleeping up on the top part of the skull. So that's really easy to get. And then you can run up and down this area, but you don't have horseback. So it's a little slower, but you'll still find a couple if you are less than 50% complete and waiting on a blood moon. So I would try to get above that 50% threshold, hit a blood moon, and don't stress yourself out over this. Last map that we're looking at is our first one. And we're going to this area right here. Hopefully you haven't had a blood moon yet because that'll make this process way easier. But if you have, it's really not a big deal. The swift violets are much easier to acquire than the key swings. But basically what you're doing is there are these giant mushrooms in this area and you want to ascend up on them. And then each mushroom generally has five. There's 30 total. It's a fixed number. And you just want to try to grab them without falling off in whatever way you feel comfortable doing, whether that is using ultra hand, for example, or just trying to uh, hang off the edge. If you still haven't gotten a blood moon yet, that is awesome. Head straight to this lake right here and get as many frogs as you can. Um, they can be a little tricky to catch. You're gonna make some of them run away, but just try to catch more than you lose and make some progress and then if a blood moon restocks this pond, you are golden. Otherwise, if you're missing a couple, I would go to Hateno Village. There's a well on the northwest side of the town. Uh, go down that well. There's a lot of frogs down there. And then 
if you have your sensor on when you're in that well, it'll basically tell you to ascend out of the well, and then you'll see some more in a lake. Um, and then if you want to throw money at this, you can always buy frogs from Beetle at Stables. But I would just wait for another Blood Moon and hit up this lake because it's awesome. And then the if you're a little short on the violets, these highlighted areas have a fair amount. If you're within 15 to 10 of your 60 quota, you can definitely close that out here or uh, go near the Rito Village. There's plenty over there. there. Swift violets are really everywhere though. This is just convenient because you're by the frogs. So, And shameless plug, this is the same shrine that I mentioned in my food guide video uh, last week about how to make a ton of apples for early game food. So, same spot. Congratulations, you are done. Now let's break down what the climbing set actually does for you. All right, I ran some tests and it appears that the climbing gear increases your climbing speed by about 40%, making you able to climb one unit of measurement per second. And at a full three stamina bars, that allows you on a straight wall to loosely climb about 82 units, whatever our uh, Z coordinate unit of measurements called and that we can see in the compass. And then I also ran a test of what happens if I just mash Y and try to go as quickly as possible. And we hit 76 units in 20 seconds. So there wasn't really a substantial drop off in climbing potential. And we shaved the time in to 25%. So that's generally going to be how I climb unless I'm in a dire need. In which case, I'll just use stamina food. So the set bonus makes a huge difference. The gear itself, uh, a little bit of a difference. You know, going from no climbing gear and taking about a minute 40 seconds to climb about 80 to being able to do it in about 20 seconds is a substantial improvement uh having it four star is a little bit more of a trophy but that's you know like i said i'm a completionist it's not super practical for most situations but it does come in handy if you're climbing and taking enemy fire so um there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this. I will be doing more armor breakdowns like this with in-depth farming and uh, analysis in the weeks to come. This took a lot of time, so the next one will probably not be for a couple days, but I look forward to uh, seeing you all again soon. Have a good one.